been dominant in China. Um, I would say that for I mean, Keen, Keen has really fallen off and switched a bunch of players out yeah. since the start of the season when they kind of surprised everybody by qualifying for Hamburg. Recently, they acquired Old Chicken. Um, their support players is a player to watch out for. Uh, Tian Ming, he changed his name uh, from before. But he does play some of these heroes that the other Chinese sports maybe don't play as much. He's a Chen player. He's a Wisp player. You know, some of these more uh, kind of Western type of support choices. So that's something to watch out for. But I think just in terms of uh, raw as Chen would say, like just like raw strength from these teams, I think LGD has got to be a colossal favorite in this. Mm. And Lacoste, we, we said that Keen might struggle to get out of this group, and it yeah. kind of looks like that if they lose this one. Keen has one one win, right? Yeah. Uh, against OG. 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 So the I didn't expect them to time. win. I, I saw Keen gaming during uh, WSG. I saw many of their games. They didn't really play like a team. Seems like something is missing. Jack already said that uh, they swapped a couple of players out that might be, be the thing, but... Uh, and I also thought that we're doing uh, IG uh, against the uh, effect. Okay. So. Well, you thought that's the game we were doing? <laughs> yeah. <here>? I mean, <laughs> it, uh, production, can, can we change the match? Because Lacoste has done prep on the wrong one. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm hearing that. that is, that's not possible this time around. I think that's on the other, the other uh, group, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. So L LGD seems like the old LGD when they were on top of their fame. I like how they play. Ame really versatile. Can play pretty much anything. Shines uh, on most of the heroes. We saw the game against um, who was it? Uh, LGD against uh, newbie. They, they just stomped yeah. them. That was yeah. the one of the best stomps. By best, I mean fastest stomps that I've seen recently. Such a one-sided game. Mm. Even though newbie looks looks kind of a shaky, so th that could also be a thing. Yeah. The, way, the way this team used to play, again, like all the resources were heavily distributed to the one and two, so you had Ame and maybe on farmers who didn't want to leave their lanes. Um, that's how they've mostly played, but I have seen some slight adjustments lately. I think maybe he's been playing quite a bit of yeah. Viper. Um, there's a stretch even before we had to play like Rubik and, and stuff. Well, this is way back in like the Jixing days, Boston Major. I'm digging into the archives here. <laughs> um, but he's made a bit of an adjustment so that the team isn't just kind of too one-dimensional and uh, mm. too greedy in that way either. Mm. They are on Jet Lake list though now. Also, I, I like is the... That, sorry. sorry, is that a positive or a negative? It's always a negative, Joe. Oh, it is. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I wonder whether director. you're going you're gonna to hit on my boy there, Jack. I thought I was going to have to... <laughs> <laughs> Reel you in with the referee. Sorry, Lacoste, you were uh, going to say. Yeah, I also love the way they draft. They have uh, 357, also known as QQQ, as their drafter. He was uh, the one uh, sitting and drafting. You, you were mentioning that uh, Chalice is... Uh, I mean, he is the captain, but uh, their coach is actually doing the draft. We know that he is an old-school, legendary home player. He, he, was, he is right now like 32, 33 years old. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, young. That, that sounds right. That's, young. But that's yeah, still well, young. <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative, right? From my my scale, that's young still. It, it's still young. I mean, I'm 30, so. On a piece yeah. of 357 trivia, on the Nanyang cruise last year, he came in second place in the huge poker tournament. Five seconds remaining. Wow. Poker. Uh, I started a table with him. I lost after the first night, but he went on. <laughs> he went on with my with my chips, and you know, I thought you related into something. I thought you were gonna great. say that you were the first. He came second. <laughs> That would have been a better story, Jack, I have to say. Uh, anyway, we'll get into the uh, draft as it's well underway. You can see all the bands, and the first pick is a Beastmaster from LGD. Dire team pick. Night Stalker. Mm, Night Stalker is a pretty good uh, response uh, against the Beastmaster. You limit the vision of the Hawk, because yep. Beastmaster relies on the Hawk a lot to allow you know, him, him to find the initiation, find the pickoff, who is alone, who is not alone. Night Stalker is a pretty Ten good way of dealing with that. It's a decent LGD's Uno hero as well. The vision for vision trade right off the bat, uh, mm -hmm. basically, for these teams. But uh, Beastmaster, I mean, we've seen that he can apply a lot of pressure um, as well into that offline together with something uh, like Ooh. a Chen, obviously, which is banned this time. Mm. That's yep. quick. Which Doctor is also their most played support. Yeah, and it works really well. Against the Beastmaster, can easily uh, zone him out. Uh, he doesn't have uh, the those uh, animals early on, but... Uh, I mean, Cask is so good against them. I mean, generally, right now, nowadays, like everyone yeah. just does the aura past the axe. Yeah. Because yeah. he does so much but damage. But in, in the mid game, it's still really good. The bounces just to keep them in place. Plus, he all, most of the time, Beastmasters go for the Helm of the Dominator, so that's, that's the extra bounce. Viper banned out. So they might go for, for. For a Dragonite, I'd say. Pogna, Dragonite, kind of yeah. hero. Pushing hero, since they have the Beastmaster. So this does answer terribly, it does answer some of the, the, the keen cores that we've seen uh, 
picked a little bit more often. The Phantom Lance or something they take. Uh, they've, they've played Core Monkey King, I think, recently as well. Ten seconds so remaining. LGD also saying, we're going to take this hero first phase. He's that strong. You know, if you guys want to show your remaining. hand or really commit to countering him, that's fine because we'll be able to get that pick in. Mm. I mean, uh, VP has been using Doom against uh, Terrible. I, I don't Just know if taking out of the game. Yeah, I don't know if Keen is gonna do it, but that's one of the few answers that teams have been right. Like we saw yeah. the Art Warden last game wasn't too successful. Turn to it's not in their recent so yeah. of, uh, heroes for Keen. Mm. With AA and Viper out, this this really DP. smells like uh, DP and yeah. or Dragonite for Keen Gaming. One more ban for LGD. I love Pugna as a counter to a Terror Blade because uh, when he's low HP, if he uses a Sunder, that's a lot of uh, burst damage as well. Most of the time, those Pugnas even go for Dagon, so Terror Blade can't even use Sunder. I mean, Decrep was also yeah. useful. Yeah. I think OD would be a solid pick here as well. Again, you have some save for the Beastmaster. Um, and, mm. and usually seen a, often seen against Terror Blade. Yeah, but OD against Terror Blade, the matchup is a bit like. It's also difficult for the OD later because uh, Terabit outranges you. He hits you from a far range and um, you don't farm as quickly as him. Like the tempo of like Terabit is a position one hero, but his momentum in the game is so quick. It's difficult to defend your early towers if you have an OD. Like generally you're going to want, uh, you're going to want blink for stuff and then you, you're going to build like, maybe a BKB or something else like a hex. And during that, that phase of time, for you getting there, you're probably going to lose, like, what, three tier ones and maybe Roshan or one or two of your tower tools as well. I, I, I know some teams like to do, like, OD against, like, Terabit. Like, that, that's the idea that, that you, you kill the illusions really quickly. Yeah, and that, there's, and that there is, like, good magical burst damage kind of from range as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if the Terrorblade waits too long, it just makes it harder for him to sunder. Um, you can just get blown up very quickly if the stacks start to add up. And plus the save instead of Beastmaster. Nice to DP. Yeah, so I want to see Shadow Demon, especially paired up with, uh, with the Terror Blade. That hero received such a huge buff. Seven seconds duration with mm. constantly dispelling you. I mean, the cooldown increased from 40 to 60 seconds, but imagine a Life Stealer using Rage, and then you just uh, purge him. He's done. He's done. No, oh, but Life Stealers now don't care. They have Radiance. That they, they do the radiance build, so they, you know, it won't be as bad as like for a life stealer with a death soul and S and Y. Yeah. I mean, but I I, I can see where this is going. It, this is just one example. Yeah, it's just her. yeah. I know. Well, one Mr. Of Chan. Example. Yes, Mr. Stipe. All yes. right, back to you, Mr. Chen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. You set it up all for that one all the way. <laughs> that went all the way around that one. So again, another Venge uh, Beastmaster. This is the third time we've seen this today. Mm. Yeah, we saw that synergy earlier. Um, it's you know, otherwise beyond that, you have a save now for the Terror mm. Blade as well. Um, I, like obviously the natural synergy. Win with Winter Wyvern though is the counter to all these kind of thing. If you can fit it in your draft, because of the uh, the auras, you just kill your teammates so quickly. Like that's generally uh, what we did in the past uh, against this kind of aura, like heavy yeah, stacking like aura. against the Lycan as like, well. Yeah, Lycan, Beastmaster. Necrobook uh, heroes. It's nice when you had Ice 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 to play the uh, offlane version of the Wyvern. Oh, I, I think it's fine if you, you play support against this kind of lineup, if you can fit it in. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not a fan of like maybe a position for roaming Wyvern. I'm more like a position 5 Winter Wyvern. I doubt they do. They'll probably just get like a... Yeah, they, they can't, obviously they can't afford it in their lineup anymore. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. If, I wouldn't be shocked if it just went DK or something. LGD's yeah. turn to pick. So Underlord is uh, also pretty good against all this... Uh, Bench, uh, beast mask, like heavy physical damage heroes, including Terra Bay because of the aura. And you get a this is a Crimson Guard game, you really want to get that quickly. Crimson, maybe a Solar Crest as well to negate all the physical damage. Yeah, they don't have any magical, so you can easily skip pipe for now. They still have two more heroes. The mid hero could probably be a magic hero. Good for uh, that's some do like some Dodo hand drops. <laughs> <laughs> SF Venge Beastmaster, all the auras. They have a good mixture of uh, magic and physical damage. A lot of a lot of minus armor with the Venge and Terrible. Uh, sorry, SF. Yeah, they've got a yeah, solid matchup as well. They're two most picked heroes, by the way. Terrorblade. And Shadowfin. Yeah. Yeah. Shadowfin is also one the of the ringers. one of the better heroes against uh, Dead Prophet. He doesn't care about Spirit Siphon. If he hits the third raise, she's most likely dead. Also, Dead Prophet received the 
a little bit of nerf as well, the Spirit Siphon okay. recharge time and the uh, silence mana cost. 80 to 110, right? Yeah. Uh, so what kind of carry you want against this kind of lineup? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> it's very difficult to like pick a carry against the Beastmaster. And Terrorblade like, pretty much deals with most of the carries. I feel like they just have to pick something that death balls with the with the rest of the lineup and just play that. Then way. it's gonna be like a Luna, right? If you yeah, can you can't pick Luna but, but into Luna Terra Blade. Terra Blade. Yeah, then <laughs> that's the issue with Terra Blade. It makes a lot of selections uh, pretty hard to play. So LGD still needs a mm. position four hero, right? I mean, they can play Venge as four F Y. F Y will play. It, then the last hero will be like a so, X yep. Y hero. So maybe. A task should be fine to get on top yeah. of uh, these heroes. Make uh, okay. Underlord. Underlord's lane really bad. Like you just want to shut down Underlord early on. Plus, if you have a Tusk and Shadow Fin, that's a sec pretty much secured kill on a DP. Yeah, they usually do run the Venge uh, as a four. Mm, not sure. Uh, what do you think about Clockwork? So they can give uh, SF the the good start the that he wants. So you have the Clock SF. Have a sure, or or just a reliable stun in a sanking, something with a lo lower no, cooldown. Yeah, I guess so sanking is banned. Oh, maybe no, just the a no, 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 no. Sanking, the bane is oh. yeah. Sanking is not bad. You just go another way and just get a Dazzle or something. Oh, Slada, oh. even more minus armor, yeah? Do you like that? Yeah. Mm. Slada against DP. Then <laughs> just, just kill her. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but uh, then if they do like a Vent Slada, maybe it might be too weak. Because they are uh, both heroes are not that good in the lane. They might need some... Like, Tusk is just like a stable, you know, a stable pick. You Trouble is, F Y is the Tusk player on this team as well. Yeah, plus uh, if if they go for a Tusk, uh, you can't kill the Sigil. That's the thing. Look at look at the heroes. Night Stalker, all right, has some vision. Tusk. Yeah. Oh, good cool. So we have to figure out who's playing what in okay. that team because I, I'm I'm not sure about whatever Keen Gaming picks Carry now. Rave King, Rave King, go in and tank. <laughs> like all the most of the like T N C would like do a Timber Saw against uh, Terra Blade. Uh, yes. But I don't know if Timbersaw is good with their lineup. Five like, we also don't know, really know whether they uh, whether they even play. It's not on their current hero list, bottom. but we don't have a deep pool, I have to say. <sighs> is Alchemist good? What about, what about Troll for them? Troll, troll against TB is okay. Yeah, Troll is okay against TB, but Troll doesn't like to play against... like There's three heroes that will... Like, spells that go through magic immunity. Like the Raw, then there's a the Swap, so then there's a the Punch. Thunder, I don't know. I mean, tr the ma the carry to carry matchup is. I think it's okay. Like troll against Terra Bit. Choose your hero. Mm. Okay. This is okay. Well, this is okay. It's meta. Yeah, right it's in it's the meta, of it. but like, Razor 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 doesn't run at it though. Razor does doesn't like that. Uh, Razor doesn't really do well against TB because he outranges you too. Mm. Okay. The so X Nova is going to play the uh, the Venge in this one and. Uh, uh, FY is going to play the Tusk. So, yeah, those were the two supports. So, uh, Jack, which one do you prefer? Which draft did you like in that one? It's hard for me to pick against LGD here. I think um, even without the mm. draft as a factor, they're just a much stronger team. Mm. Um, it feels like Keen kind of closed a couple of doors. They, they don't want to outscale this game. They wanted to pick something that they can run with their ball after a decent start and try to mm. win the game that way. I don't think that's going to work, and so I'm picking LGD. Okay, win 10. Yeah, it's really hard to go against like LGD. Like even disregarding the draft, you know that the the other stronger team. And right now, I I do uh, as well favor their draft. So overall, LGD. Yeah, the yeah. draft looks better for LGD. Even I I don't know if they had whatever pick for the last pick, I would still go for for LGD. The, the their lineup just if if they just get the good timings uh, on, on the heroes, it's pretty much secure game for LGD. Okay, early on we had three members of this panel. And they all picked LGD when they played. And they delivered a <laughs> flawless victory. <laughs> Just saying, right? Maybe LGD are the banking team today. Uh, the other analyst earlier on said, why do they get to pick LGD games? That's easy prediction money. I don't know what they're talking about. Let's find out whether LGD can secure a victory and go 3-1 in the group as we head back to a brand new set of commentary team. Thank you very much, Red Eye. Yes, Sam Odi Pixel here with Fogged, and we're getting ready for LGD versus Keen Gaming. We've just seen the draft, as we've heard a lot of favoring towards what LGD have. And in fact, LGD, we missed some action. They just got first blood. They did. <laughs> they went up as four. They managed to get the catch onto poor old Destiny's Witch Doctor, and they, they brought him down. They got yeah, a lot of stun, learn. a lot of wham-bam with this uh, 
with uh, having the old vengeful spirit in the lineup. Level one smoke. They yeah. just ran up. They even they showed the terror blade down bottom. So I don't think that Keen had any idea of it. And I mean, looking at the just the drafts, and LGD's picking picked uh, very similar picks that they had the previous the previous game when we saw them kind of just crush the game away. And I mean, I have a big curiosity oh, thing for Look me. Look at is this. Look at this. You guys oh, thought you missed it. We can bring it to you. There we have it. Nice. Take uh, away those T tools, champ. I, I do have to like, I have to kind of side with the way the panel's thinking too. Is like this razor. Traditionally, you see teams, you don't really want to play Razor versus these ranged cores. When you're playing versus Terra Blade, when you're playing versus Shadow Fiends, it's pretty tough to actually use the hero. So I do, I do have to side with the panel there for about that. But looking at the other things that they could benefit off of is, I think, is they could have a very strong lineup if they are able to just like s snowball off the sure. lanes. I think they have to. I think they have to though. I think if they start falling behind in this game, they don't really have the same ways to take the objectives without ultis. I think they need to rely a lot on exorcism for their damage. So I think if they play around that really well, they could be okay. But LGD, you see, you can just look at their lineup and they're like, these guys take buildings. They take Roche. I mean, as you say, sort of looking at the, the, the cause against the raise, there's not really any sort of apparent reason in that sense why you pick the raise. You think the raise is just about the, the tempo that they want to play at? Is there any other sort of reason why they would pick the raise as that sort of final pick to, to close up the draft? Maybe just comfort. Maybe they just want to crush one lane in particular. But I think the matchups in the later stage, or the matchups in the later stages versus SF and Terrible, it's just, it's not great. Let's have a look and see how old Mr. Somnus does against old Chicken's DP. Top lane, yeah, MS at the moment. Yeah, he's in every time with the link, pushing Chalice out of the lane, making sure that he has the, the CS advantage. Let's see, bottom lane, they're trying to kick things off. They've aren't got they? Dark Trap. They've got the Metamorphosis, and they're getting a heavy bit of damage onto he's Dark, dead. and he's down. That's going to be another kill here for LGD. Oh man, I'm I like this setup here from LGD, putting the full defensive tri lane for the Terror Blade, because they know that. Keen, they're trying to make sure that this uh, Underlord actually has a position in the game. But now that they're putting three heroes down here, it's going to make it a lot harder for them to actually be able to pressure or do anything versus this uh, versus this TB. Let's see. Dark again. Getting low. Now going to turn towards X Nova. Oh, let's see. He sounds back up Dark. Once he's got a few levels on him, the Underlord should have a bit of a better time down in this lane. But at the moment, it's going to be pretty tough each and every time that Metamorphosis is up from Arme. The big win right now is definitely Old Chicken. Six and five last, it's only one of, of maybe. That's a, a bit of a shocker. I mean, sure, DP, you have a much better lane versus the Shadow Fiend, but Old Chicken has been struggling a bit in this tournament. Yeah, this game looks to be, oh uh, yeah, uh, a much better situation for him. We did mention though, right? The, they want these, they pick these heroes to just win the lanes. And sure. right now, they're doing a pretty Abs good job yeah. of it, except for the two deaths that did happen. But yeah, Razor's got a good matchup versus Beastmaster. Underlord's just under Underlord's getting a decent amount of lastage too, because they brought the witch doctor the witch doctor down bottom now. So now they have the try versus try scenario, and they're actually yeah they're gonna keep it like this. They're gonna make a bit of a go here with the para paralyzing cast get Maledict onto Fy. It's gonna be in down pretty low. Unit you know, does put the mango trying to get another bit of a touch onto Fy, but Fy gets himself through the tree line, so he'll be fine for now. In fact, he's gonna be able to turn himself back towards Destiny's witch doctor as the creeps as well beating into Destiny. He's in a bit of trouble there, and he's gone. They'll get the kill. That's going to be more action going in favor of LGD as this aggression from Keen Gaming does not seem to, to be off to, to much of a start in terms of getting kills. Yeah. They don't really have too much of a kill lineup, right, until later, until at least especially in that first night time. And once they have levels up in the Maledict, their damage is pretty limited. And then later on, they're going to really need to rely on Exorcism, as I was mentioning before. The top, you see Chalice is of course suffering quite heavily versus a Razor as expected. Uh, each and every time he comes in, yeah. MS just able to to force him back and out of the lane. Whereas we're seeing maybe now getting some, some of the CS back up on his on his mid SF. Eight for one against the thirteen for nine. Still quite a difference, but once the levels are there, you do expect to see the, the Shadow Fiend be able to catch up. Huh. FY um FY bought a bottle, by the way, on the side shop okay. on the secret shop and he actually refilled it just now with mm. X Nova's TP mid. So they're looking to fix this lane a bit in the mid lane because they have a feeling that it's just not going very well. Yeah, they tried for the long range shards there. I mean if they did get the quick the, the grab on as well, chicken would have certainly been a good kill attempt. Yeah. With they're the level gonna, two raises, but they're going to move away and actually try to help the lane. So they're going to go gank top, it seems, for the Beastmaster. And this is something that Razor can get punished by. Because sure, this hero is great at laning. But once you bring a couple extra heroes, can die very easily. But it's really the same as to, to be said for Arme on this, uh, on the Terra Blade. So as soon as King Gaming realize he's alone, the, yeah. the Underlord and, and Night Stalker can get that bit more aggressive. Especially with it being nighttime now. Yep, they definitely can. And now they have a haste turn as well. Yeah. 
He's going to make a, a beeline straight for it. And this is the Terra Blade out on his own. Let's see how much Yuna can do, Arme. How careful is he going to play? Just come back in the same time up top. That's the play you're talking about being made. LGD getting in on Terra Blade. He's going to force the TP from Yuna. So Yuna will get a return kill for the loss of his Razor. He's got a haste and they're also rotating the Witch Doctor in right now. And he's going to continue to lock down onto Chalice. Over. He can do anything to keep this Night Stalker off the Beastmaster. The Paralyzing Cast bounces successfully twice, but it looks like Yuna's going to back up. Doesn't manage to finish off Chalice. Chalice will be able to get himself mid -lane. away. Mid lane. They've got the shards down on towards Chicken. He's able to get himself out and around, though. Maybe didn't quite have enough raises to burst down Old Chicken, so Old Chicken will survive. FY just keeps using this bottle, though. He's coming in and just healing his teammates a bunch whenever he's moving around. So the bottle purchase is being good, but look at this, the lanes. Look at those last hits, this is what we were talking about. Is Keen, they did just pick the for the winners. lanes. Yeah, absolutely. The CS looking great for all three cores. Yeah. As uh, Army certainly still feeling pretty left behind down here on this bottom lane, despite his sort of supports to the side of him getting those kills against Keen Gaming in the lane. The space hasn't really been made for himself and uh, has been re relatively left alone. Will now be rejoined by the Tusk, but other than that, it's, it's a tough start for the Terrorblade. And they're trying to punish now mid. The rotation coming in from Yuna is done. Got a lot of ways to, to close the gap here with Yuna just looking to dive the tab, and the fire fire comes out. He'll be able to get a couple of raises, oh. three raises. Now. Oh in fact, he's going to get both of them. He's going to get double. Will finally get taken down by Old Chicken with the Crips one, but oh, he gets a, gets a couple of kills on the way out. I think they do have to gank the Shadowfiend, though, because this is when it starts to become more Shadowfiend favored, is once you get the levels, once you get your high levels and raises as well as all your souls added up versus DP, it starts to be a bit hard. Because as a DP, just in theory, right, you walk up with your Spirit Siphon, you're bound to get hit by a couple of raises. So doing the rotations is necessary, but losing two heroes is absolutely not worth. So still a very early game, even if there is six to two kill score just because of those last hits. The Razor still M MS dominating that top lane, level six. Chalice only level four at the moment. And you can see the SF. Right. Got a Somnus ready for any sort of attempt like that again. He's got the double mangoes ready to pop. Yeah, and now he's playing he's playing more on the right side as well. And they even got a with the sentry ward they place in mid, they got a D ward. Bottom lane. Got a bit of a go here onto Dark, but not quite enough damage and control. Top lane. MS actually able to find Chalice as uh, the Razor starts to move from the top towards the mid. Him and Witch Doctor able to pick off the Beastmaster. Now they're looking towards Somnus. Look at Yuna's rotation in behind the tower here. It's going in deep here. They've got the Plasma Field trying to chase. TP's are coming through, but the Cast Masters will be there. Snowball comes through, saving some time for Somnus, but he's incredibly low. The side from the Crypt Swarm from Old Chicken as they're just diving in. Keen Gaming up and past the Tier 2 tower, getting Old Chicken the double kill. Despite LGD TPing in, trying to turn things around, Keen Gaming crushing the lanes, getting aggressive, and able to pick these kills back up from LGD. Now bringing it to a 6-5. to five. And Getting some damage onto this Tier 1 tower as well with his first use of Exorcism. They've got to keep the pace up, especially with Night Stalker. First few night times, absolutely crucial. And we actually got we actually got to cast Keen yesterday a bit, and Yuno was the big one to look at for the rotations. He's doing a great job already on this Night Stalker, involved in all five kills. His rotations are what's securing them these lanes so heavily. That's so what got them to kill on Chalice, that's so what got them to kill mid and bottom. And look at this, he's continuing to look for this aggression. Scouting out Ame. Oh, he's gonna be able to cancel the TP. He is, cancels it, holds Ame down here for now. He is level six, but did not put a point in the Sunder, of course, so no way to react to those sort of plays. MS comes in as well for the party. They find the kill on TB. This is, this is looking pretty sweet from Keen Gaming, despite being sort of knocked down at the, the start by five to one. Yep. They're able to find the farm in the lanes and now they're able to mobilize it around the map and, and sort of shake LGD right up. Successful first night. I mean, you know, as we're, as we're talking him up, he makes an incredible good, incredibly good play there to catch up the Terror Blade. A little bit of space for Chalice up Much top to, to put some pressure onto this tier one tower. Looks like it won't be answered by Keen Gaming. The last hits are starting to catch back up as the lanes progress. They're going to TP Yuna up here, but he is on his own. Just have to be a little bit careful. FY in the trees, but they've Scouted. got eyes on him. They really want to try to secure this tower on LGD, getting that extra gold. We'll probably actually push them into the net worth lead. And they're even bringing more heroes. They want to make sure they get this. I'm thinking if they can maybe trap Yuna. Oh, the shards! Please. They have got him with the shards. He's pretty beefy. They've got the raw. They'll hold him down. Have they got enough damage with the wave of Terra Arm Reduction helping out? They should just be able to do it, and they do. LGD catch out Yuna. They do finish off the tower. In fact, Arme is the one to come up and make sure that he gets the last hit on it. So some, some well-needed money for the Terra Blade. 
Perfect shards by a fly. And I believe maybe during this was... I think he's been clearing some stacks. Cause his last hits increased quite heavily on that Shadow Fiend. So level 8 now already. Building some HP items. Just wanted to build the tank up versus this high magic damage that Keen does have early on. Getting raindrops, Aquila, as well as the Bracer. And into Treads first. Yeah, really the standard story for, for the Shadow Fiend. Did suffer in the, the early couple of ways, but now him and the Death Prophet pretty much even in net worth. Yeah. Maybe has been able to, to catch up to Old Chicken. And you look at the wards at the moment from LGD. It's, they're going to be expiring pretty soon, but they're they're trying to protect their jungle because they lost his bottom tower so early. And because of the early lineup that he drafted. Oh, uh, the shards again. again. They've locked Destiny in. They've got the Witch Doctor. FY. Coming in clutch. MS trying to pressure Ame down bottom here. Ame didn't have a TP, but wasn't able to close the gap with that static link. Have a few bottle charges there from Chalice being given to maybe. Hey, he has got to regen himself. <laughs> <coughs> Let's see what they can get down here. Ame, how's he doing? He's got the treads finished now. MS still uh, still getting away with pushing this, uh, this bottom lane down. Does have the, the Witch Doctor behind him. But it's this sort of movement in the jungle up top that LGD are looking to try and do something with there. They're getting away very close to the tier 2 tower. Chalice does have the raw and he's going to open up with it. Straight in onto the beast, onto the, the Night Stalker, sorry. With the couple of raises from Somnus, it's enough. TPs will be cancelled. Nothing that Keen Gamer can do about that. As their tier 2 tower up here in a bit of trouble now. They'll pop the fortification. At least they've got Dark up here, so he can actually slow this down quite a lot. I think LGD's actually put off from putting this push in, but maybe just kind of cut the creep wave quick with two raises while mid. Now maybe they can try to go for something here onto Old Chicken. Not really the two best it's gap It's pretty closers. hard to get the lock down, and unless they, they get a magic missile from the side. Nova was starting to come in, but Old Chicken keeps his distance. Very close early game, though. Keen's got to... I think they do have to keep up the pace, though. I don't think they want to be able to let this Terrorblade catch back up, because it is... Quite a good Terror Blade game. There's not really a whole lot of Disable for him to not get that Sunder off in the later stages. And as we've mentioned, as the panel mentioned too, the Razor can suffer. That does continue to get good space down in the MS. As, uh, as you can see on the net worth, only the Terror Blade slightly behind all of a cause. Very much even at this stage. Very close game, 12 minutes in. It's nine for six, less than a 1K difference. It's going to go almost only back and forth with this tower being taken. The try for deny won't be able to find it. Dark gets the final touch. It's the tier one tower taken in favor of Keen Gaming. Dark doing so well could be really crucial for their lineup. Getting a very early Crimson Guard, as yeah. panel talked about it too. It's heavy physical damage coming out from G LGD. The only real magical is coming out from the Shadow Fiend. Sure, like a couple of the spells are going to be magical, but the real emphasis is that physical aspect. So that, that Crimson Guard could be just huge in those team fights to protect them. In particular, that Death Prophet. And they're looking to smoke up. They're looking to keep on the aggressive. Actually smoking into, into their own jungle, as it seems. They know the Chalice is pushing out top. LGD also making a sm smoke rotation could top. catch him from behind. I think Keen might be able to make it there before LGD is, though. Chalice is very far up. Let's see how they go about this. Opening with the Siphon onto Chalice. He tries for TP, but of course they've got many ways to cancel that, so they get the pick off. We'll see if the rest of LGD want to do anything into this. It doesn't look like they do. Dark did also rift up there to, to join the party. And LGD without their Beastmaster will be a little bit careful about how they go about this push. They get a bit of damage on it, but they do back off as soon as Keen Gaming show their faces towards the mid lane. Not interested in, in fighting without the, the potential of Chalice's roar. I think they don't really want to. They don't want to fight directly without, not only without the Beastmaster, but fighting directly into Underlord and Death Prophet at the moment. They are lacking a little bit of damage because of how setback the Terror Blade is. But they do. They're, they're gonna have to make some moves around soon. They almost have the Book One finished on Chalice. That could be go time when they have that Book One, and then they just make a move with four to make space for the Terror Blade. They still do have quite a lot of damage if they are avoiding that Underlord. You know. Trying to give some information for his team here. 
and they're back on position up top LGD to, to push onto the tier two. They're right up to it. The Crimson Guard now complete for Dark. There's a very good potential in, in keeping these towers alive if he wants to return to, to defend. As it seems at the moment, they're much happier sort of setting up base inside LGD's own jungle and pushing that tier two themselves. So looking to be just a straight tier two for tier two trade. LGD will take this one just that a little bit quicker by the looks of it, but. A lot faster. They're not even, old chicken's not even moving. popping the exorcism. They're just gonna force on the high and force some reactions. So. They've got to come back here, Keen Gaming. They are playing around with Armay in the middle lane. They're looking at this uh, attempt. For, in fact, with the size, they've got a chance, but the swap comes through. Death was cancelled, and Destiny, he's got a TP out. He's in a bit of awkward position up on the high ground. He will make it away, but Yuna will not be quite as lucky as LGD come back in pretty much full force to find that kill. That was a very overzealous dive there from Keen. They, I mean, losing their top tower, they actually they just got split up around the map from LGD's movements. They didn't really react, and they haven't really gotten chances to use this exorcism. Old Chicken almost level 12 now, so that could be the ticker for him to try to pressure something, maybe make way into Roche if they can find some lucky pickoff, but LGD really starting to catch back up here now. 1k lead, experience just about even. Slowly but surely climbing back into it all as uh, they do manage to, to make this leap with this sort of a little bit of an outplay, but Keen Gaming not wants to be left behind, want to, to regain the advantage. They smoke up. Yuna leading the way. They've got 30 seconds left on nighttime, as well as darkness, so they actually do have about a minute left it on feels, that nighttime. It feels like LGD, you know, that they're, they're aware of this. They're backing off. Yeah. They're keeping themselves very much close to the base, as they know that it's likely that they are going to try and make the smoke movement during the remainder of this nighttime. LGD is walking under ward vision, though. They tried to find the D ward down bottom, but Keen knows exactly oh, where they are. They're going in. They've got the route down onto Chalice, focusing the Beastmaster. Quick swap comes out. Is it going to be enough to save him? Doesn't look like it. They do focus him. Maybe with the drone charge, they can get him out. The drones come through. Chalice can turn and roar. They're able to find the kill onto Yuna. A couple of raises come out towards Destiny. Wave of Terror, not enough to bring him down. The Crimson Guard from Dark keeping him alive. MS trying to focus on Duame, but the Snowball Forward comes in. FY has the punch, but now he's the one in trouble. They turn their attention towards the Tusk. They take down a second Keen Gaming, and they may even get Somnus. The route from Dark Silence as well. They chase him down with the Siphon slow, Somnus, can he get his way out of there? They he cannot. They'll find this Shadow Fiend, Keen Gaming, taking three. The smoke a success as they get on top of the Beastmaster first, that hero that ideally LGD want to have initiate, taken out of it. And the uh, the cask there, especially too, right? The book was popped, so the cask just started bouncing between that and the Beastmaster, so they were able to close the gap, and there, the Crimson Guard really coming oh, into yeah, play, absolutely. that damage reduction. Yeah, certainly kept. A couple of them alive for sure. Destiny nearly dying to the right clicks of Somnus, but that Crimson Guard, just enough to save him. Yeah, Ame Shong, then he still needs a, quite a bit more time on this Terror Blade before he really can get involved. And uh, a little bit of a, a, a bit of a different build from the Razor. Uh, oh, okay. The pace of the game certainly fits out. Goes the phase boots into Heaven's Halberd. I mean, it is, he is playing versus those two range cores, so yeah. he wants that five second disarm since the Halberd is better versus range heroes. That it does make sense. And as we were implying as well, as there's a lot of just straight physical damage from LGD, so just reducing that. Yeah, and certainly fits the, the plan that we sort of expected King Gaming wanted to go for, just closing the game up as soon as possible, getting these items that give them all the benefit in, the, in this stage of the game. Yeah. The pipe is going to be built for Dark soon. He has a hood at the moment. So that'll reduce more of that damage from LGD. Well, Somnus is out. Hopefully he'll be back in pretty shortly, but... Oh, they could... I think LGD could actually sneak a Roche here. I don't think Keen I think can actually take the yeah, fight either. Yeah, I think that's the plan. They've got, they've got no exorcism. I was checking that's if the they had... One. They don't have Medallion, but they do have the Book 1 and Beastmaster, and they've got a lot of minus armor. So, yeah, I think yeah. I think they could definitely sneak this Roche here. They could show the TB bottom, and then it would be pretty unexpected. Keen might be able to kill Ame through it for it, but I think LGD would be perfectly fine with that. And oh, yeah. They could definitely... With the, yeah. with the, with the Beastmaster's auras and such... They can certainly go for this. It's just a question if they want to try and fight a pick off first, and it doesn't look like it. They, nope, they're they're straight, straight to the pit. As you say, very unlikely that Keen Gaming are going to, very fast to have a read on this, or if they even did, be able to do anything about it. Yep. So a free Roche here for LGD. And uh, they should be able to get back in time to defend that tier two as well if needs be. So that is where King Gaming are starting to push back in. Look at the sentries placed in the bottom side of the map from LGD. They were really they trying to find this OBS, but they weren't able to find it. Well, a very sneaky one. Six sentries. Yeah, six sentries. Six sentries. My goodness. 600 Did gold. Did they find any wards with that? 
I think maybe I, I don't think I they did. They maybe did. one, but I don't think that they did. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's more money there. Oh no, it's not more money. Nearly. Nearly there. Nearly as much. Almost as much as a gem. Quick maps. Yeah. Six hundred gold. And Keen, they get bottom tier two. They're looking to threaten, force some reactions back. Here we go. They've got to the push. death profit ulti too. They are. They want to go in on this. We'll see how LGD can hold. They do have the, the Aegis and search. In fact, the Crimson Guard comes out. Destiny's falling low, and Destiny will go down. The swap, the chicken. First, but straight away with the raw onto Chicken. They're holding the DP in place, but they managed to take down the Terra Blade. He could not get the, the Sunder off in time, and he's had to buy back here for the defense. He's coming and back in, and this old Chicken still just alive, getting incredibly low off this, but LGD could not quite finish him off. Yuna canceled uh, maybe his TP up top, too. You see the Night Stalker is just playing with the Shadow Fiend at the moment, so that's the damage that they're Dark. missing. Ooh, taking MS just out in time. They had they had maybe TPing in, in the front lines there, and yeah, the Night Stalker comes in, cancels the TP, so that's that actually saved Old Chicken. But Ame, not expecting to get burst through that silence, Absolutely unable to get not. the Sunder. Because they swapped they swapped Chicken into like a pretty weird position where he was at. I mean, it looked like of Old Chicken should have been dead. Yeah. He was right underneath that tower, but they just couldn't find the damage to bring him off. Again, as, we, as you said, the, the, the timings and, as well on, on, on Dark. Having this Crimson Garden such at this stage, the way that he's able to keep his team alive and with the Auras, it's it's absolutely making all the difference in these fights. The, the draft is making total sense with the way that Keen Gaming are playing it. And here we go. Let's see how GD strike back as they will look to fight. They're trying to make use of this Aegis, so they're sitting yeah. behind the Shadow Fiend looking for a pick off Dark. Good Gipper. He's taken out here. They've got more than enough. Yeah, they've got the control. He's all out on his own. He'll pop the Crimson Guard, but the Raze is flying through. And he'll find the kill. It's a decent one as well. Dark been having quite a good run. Yeah, he's at, he was like one of the top net worth in the game pretty much for the entirety of this. And now they can transition this into a push. With their lineup, it's just very natural for them to actually just take these towers. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing in this game. Both teams can just take towers at a, a ridiculous rate. Yep. So any any sort of lost engagement will certainly result in you losing towers. As this tier two pushed down by LGD without the Underlord, it's it becomes a lot harder for King Gaming to sort of answer these sort of pushes from LGD. He really is like they're all they're only deep push. Like sure, there's there's the Crypt Swarm, there's the Razor Plasma Field, but those spells, if you walk up, it's it's unreliable because you can just get yeah, you swapped just in just and you just die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look Top at these, the wards, the Are aggressive they? wards. They've got the silence as well. They've got three of them on, and that's the Terra Blade gone. He comes out, thinks he's safe there, Arme, between the tier one and the tier two, but Keen Gaming with the three of them, able to get a wrap around, catching him off on his own. He's down for quite a long time, 60 seconds, because of his uh, his buyback time of still being on cooldown. Yeah. Yuna did the rotation while they were pushing mid. When they killed the Underlord, he literally just beeline toward top to get those wards down to be able to try to find a pick off, and it works perfectly. Oh, FY. Wants to strike back, looks for the shard control, onto the Razor, won't quite be able to get it. Does get the snowball and the punch, but now they're going to turn. Yuna looks towards the Shadow Fiend, quick with the magic missile coming out. They're tried with the raw the here, cast. focusing the Razor, but he's getting a good static link off, meaning that this Shadow Fiend is going to do no damage at all. They're going to, to pop the Aegis. Chalice and FY trying to jump in and chase down Mammoth, but he's just a little bit too fast on the Razor, getting himself Away. They'll come back with a single life. Yuna will fall, but Old Chicken walks into the midst of the fight, going in with the Exorcism, trying to chase them all down. He's got the Yule Scepter there to cancel the Requiem of Somnus. He's trying to chase for the Siphon, but he can't quite have enough control. And in fact, he kills off some oh. of the Beastmasters. Uh, Necro units there with the Exorcism and ends up hurting himself massively. And now the turnaround comes in. They're looking towards Dark, trying with the Requiem. Dark has the Crimson out. It's going to take quite a bit of a beating, but Arme and Chalice are heading over, looking to finish off this big old Underlord, and they will do so. The you book just did it. It took so, so much. much damage to Old Chicken there. Oh, is he Nova? I want to find this Destiny Witch. Doctor, he's trying for the TP out. Will he make it? He will. So I think, I also think I saw the, so the reason it did so much damage is because he got applied by the Wild Axes first. Ah. So the damage bonus actually uh -huh. from the Necro Book dying, because I, I was like, wait, it's only like a level two Necro Book, but he took like 700 or more damage, so. The Wild Axe is coming into play there just to amplify that damage from the book death. Just it kills Chicken so fast. And them having Aegis comes into play there because they fought oh, that yeah. 4v5. They, they could keep maybe wow. uh, alive for that second I haven't run in. And that was a fight as well, I believe, what Yuna brought back. Yeah. But was unable to, to turn it back in favor of King Gaming. In fact, now, now Yuna, Yuna, he's in trouble. He's been trapped here by the shards. He's going to be chased down by FY as he blinks for. Doesn't quite have enough control, though. So Yuna will be able to speed himself away. I, I actually have not seen that that interaction happen, though. The book damage being amplified by Axis. That's the first time in all the games I've seen a Beastmaster that actually coming into play. That was very big for LGD to come them, get them to come back in this game. Now it's a 3k lead, 3k experience as well. 
Man, that was really cool. Has, uh, he's pretty much got the money for his BKB. So this is going to be a pretty big Shadow Fiend in the fights. As we've seen, though, if, if the MS can still get the static link off on him at the start, it certainly massively limits Somnus's potential. And he can't really go much more further than a couple of, well, a few raises. It's going to protect him a lot versus, like, the cask, though. We saw in that oh, instance. Sure. The cask was literally yeah. just bouncing between three heroes and being quite a ruckus. But now that won't be such an issue for the Shadow Fiend. But still, like, they're just trying to catch Ame back up in this game. He's got, he actually has... S and Y plus Dragonlance, and now the BKB okay. skewed up. So his farm isn't so bad, but 1, 3, and 5. It's kind of just been his, been his team carrying him. Yeah, it does mean that going for, for, for sort of the S and Y rather than the Manta, that he absolutely needs the BKB before he can really yeah. try and fight. They are going to try and come in the rest of them immediately the there with the raw control onto World Chicken. They burst down the Death Prophet. Death Fall comes out from Destiny, but it is enough to find the kills in return. It will get the Vengeful Spirit and the Tusk, but they've lost two. Keen Gaming wanting to chase for more. They look towards Somnus, but the BKB's out. Man fighting up against MS. MS has to back away. The physical damage too much. In fact, one more touch. Oh, he's got oh, it. Case, Still able to <laughs> find it. They will finish off MS's Razor. Push back Keen Gaming. That's where you see the, the Razor the razor versus the Shadow Fiend plus TB. He tries to walk in to get a link and just gets right click down from all the physical. And here comes the push for the Metamorphosis still up. They'll be able to speed through the Tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. Looks like they'll play it safe, not wanting to try for much more as LGD know that they are now starting to build up that lead. 6k gold lead here at 25 minutes with their two carries at the top. Yeah. I've been really impressed by uh, Keen's warding game, though, so far this game. Like, Yuna has been, every single time, getting very deep wards to kind of watch the movements. And he's putting them in unorthodox positions, too. Like, look at this bottom ward, these mid ward, this mid ward, and then earlier that ward that was placed near the base. It didn't, it seemed like LGD was prepared for those, especially when they put down six sentries and didn't find it. But still, these swaps, I think this, this Venge play by Xnova, he's 2-1 and 14, involved in nice. 16 of the kills. Level Stand 12. A lot. He's been doing incredibly well. I mean, sort of between him and, and Chalice, you just have a, a fantastic amount of, of control on lockdown. You can sort of pick yeah. and choose your target in these fights, as, as long as uh, Nova's the one sort of making the first play. And uh, you know, Keen Gaming, the, other than sort of the Rift, there's not really any way of, of, of specifically saving uh, a core that gets gone on. Yeah. They, and have King, the, they have the auras and such, but no way to, to really get them back out. Yeah, they don't have the biggest ways of saving They don't have a great way to start the fight. You see the way that they're starting yeah. the fun is they're all just like running in at the same exact time. When you look at LGDs, it's much more natural. They have either Swap, they have Tusk, they have Beastmaster. Keen's just kind of has to run in with their ultimate from the Death Prophet and catch somebody off guard. But now, as we mentioned, is those BKBs are out. In particular for the Shadow Fiend and almost done on the Terrorblade. And, and maybe is getting closer and closer to a Daedalus already on the Shadow Fiend. So his... Right click is pretty scary now. And it's, it's, it's to be expected as well, that sort of strat, as you said, when you have a lineup that wants to be running at people as five, you know, for the first 20 minutes of the game, it can be very, very strong, but yeah. that sort of method's always going to fall off. The, it, it's always going to be tailored towards the earlier stages of the game, but when it gets to the point where LGD have ways to sort of break you apart, and uh, at the point now where, because they haven't been playing most of the game grouped up as five, individually their, their cores are just much stronger than yours, it just doesn't work out anymore just running in a head first as a five man. Yeah. So now they have a mech so that's going to be able to save people a little bit better here from, from Dark. And they actually get a successful scan here onto FY on the sidelines with that ward that Yuna placed in the lane earlier, but FY will be just fine. And Roche has respawned. So LGD, they could look to just make their way into the pit. And now with, I mean, they've got Medallion finished, Book 3 finished. They actually have, they have two Medallions. Okay. It's going it to be a solo crest already for the Beastmaster, so oh, they can right. stack those up. It depends how how sort of, you know, I had that feeling because, you know, Kigan, they still have the Exorcism, they still have the, yeah. the Underlord around the pit, and having their five man, it is still a very, very strong fight around there. They can obviously look for it themselves with the Exorcism, but for both sides, ideally, they want to, to make sure that at least the other team is distracted by going for an objective or that they've managed to break apart at least one of their members before going into that area. For Ame, or for uh, LGD, it's a little bit easier for them to just like start the fight and then go for a roast because they've got those ways to initiate, yeah. as we've been mentioning. Yeah, you just see Nova there was sort of priming himself for a swap. Yeah. They didn't, I actually don't think they have any smokes left. I don't see any on them. So, because they all kind of gather together for a but second. They're going to try. They get the swap. They're going to go for it. This could be a bit of a tough one or not. Mate, oh they just God. destroy that Underlord. 
could have been a bit of a you, tough talk. You saw them sort of hesitate on it because they're like, can we go on the Underlord? Yes, they certainly can. They absolutely and rip MS. him to pieces. MS plus the BKB and tries to TP out with the physical at this stage from Arme and Somnus. With the ways that it's buffed up from the attack speed aura from Chalice, from the minus armor from X Nova's way for Terra, th these heroes just melt at this stage. Sure, you've lost FY in the river, but it doesn't matter because LGD, they're in the base, they're taking tier threes, they're taking barracks as well. There's no glyph. And they might even be able to take two, two sets here. There's they no buyback on top. Dark. Yeah. There's a buyback on uh, MS, but. But he used the BKB. Yeah, so what he's are you going to do weak. to stop this? I mean, that's definitely two racks. And Keen Gaming certainly drafted for a timing, and that timing has well and truly passed now as LGD just walking over them. And, and that's got to be a worry there. As I said, that was always the sort of the testing point. It's like, can they just go on the Underlord first? Yes, they can. And then at that point, when you have this hero that's been such a, a crucial part of what you're trying to do, just disappear in a matter of, of milliseconds yeah. in front of your eyes, it's it's hard to not feel that the game may may be coming close to an ending. With that sort of pick. It does feel like that timing window has pretty much stopped like, well, what entirely. What hope does the Underlord have in the fights? If, if he dies that quickly, how, how can he play his game? They don't have a... I mean, like we said, they don't have a way to start the fight. So they're always going to get jumped on first by LGD. So they're always going to have that disadvantage. They need this Aegis. If they don't get this Aegis cheese, there's no yeah, way back they in the are, game. They have them. to go for these sort of plays. But of course, LGD... They are relatively... Are they going to head over? If they get away with this Keen, it certainly could be something... They're spotted. Silence. On to the, the Vengeful Spirit. It's at half out for the moment. BKB's come out. Army trying to head into Mr. Bit already to start punching away. But already they're losing two here on LGD. They've lost the Venge and the Beastmaster. But still the two cores remain standing. The Death Lord doing a fair bit of work here from Destiny on the sidelines. They've got the Silence onto the Terra Blade with the BKB's wearing off. LGD had to back away. They didn't get... To, they weren't able to kill the Underlord first. So he got everything off Pep. Uh, pipe, Mac, Crimson Guard, that reduces their damage so much. And now, losing the Vengeance Beastmaster, that's a lot of aura damage. And that's pretty big. This is started with... And they've managed Very to get the Silas on here. FY as well, making sure that he can't, or at least it will struggle to try and get to the pit in time. And Keen Gaming, they've got the control, they've taken it down. They'll get the Roche, Aegis, and Cheese into their hands. And despite, at that time, being at about a 16k gold deficit, they strike back. They needed that so badly. I mean, it was, it was kind of like the perfect fight for them, though, right? The, the Underlord gets a successful pit on the two heroes, the Venge and the Beastmaster, as they're trying to initiate, and then he gets all of his defensive abilities off and standing yeah. on top of the Shadow Fiend, standing on top of that Terror Blade to reduce their damage. Somnus has spotted Yuna, and it will be able to back away. But not denying that Aegis and Cheese from LGD. Oh, yeah. That, that keeps the it's game huge. going for King. They're still in this with a, a bit of a chance. But it's, it's certainly going to be tough up against uh, the fact that they have lost the, the full set of racks now, both top and mid lane. Oh, man. Getting linked up. He's got the Sunder available. Hey, we'll just throw thanks for the help. Sunder is coming in, but MS is the one with the Aegis. They are going to be able to take it down there straight away. Keen's and not now, around for and this. And they're not. Chalice is coming as well. They're ready to look for the lockdown. They'll go for the Roy. Didn't get loads of stop in time, but look at the right clicks from Somnus just come in. Emma's is down for 70 seconds. And FY did jump forward with the Shards. They've got vision for the swap back. Dark beaten down as well. Somnus with this, this build at the moment just doing so much right click damage. And now with two done. They're just going for they tier are going for the base. They know that it's highly likely that the buybacks are not there on these two cores. And despite Keen Gaming having that sweet little play around the Roshan, the story continues here for LGD as they have the advantage and they play to it. Taking the tier four towers onto the Ancient. As it was always going to be pretty hard for, for Keen Gaming to come back in. And indeed, it deems to be impossible. It's Keen Gaming will drop as LGD beat them down. Yeah, they. I mean, there, there was that small moment of, of greatness from Keem in, in the early game where they were actually doing like really nice moves, but you felt that power from yeah. LGD's draft. As soon as they start getting these timings, as soon as that top fight happens, right after they get that Aegis, right after the, the unfortunate death from the Death Prophet, they're just able to kind of snowball out of control and get all these big items, and there's no way the Keem can really take these fights. They get that one successful one, but you could still feel that LGD just were way stronger yeah. with their draft. It, it was always going to be terrifying. 
yeah, getting late with the, the Terra Blade and, and with the, the Shadow Fiend. And it's just sort of question, do you think that was purely at that stage, it, it was a draft? There wasn't any other way that King Gaming could have played themselves out of that, that sort of stage of the game 25 minutes onwards with these heroes? I really felt like it was a draft, yeah. a big draft win from LGD. I think Keen had to have a huge advantage in this game. I think I think LGD just getting this first Roche just set them to such a good such a good spot in the game, and then yeah, I mean that book, I mean that book damage was ridiculous. I actually, I want, I, I want to know exactly how much damage it did because it was a book too, and it looked like it did like 900 damage because of the wild axes buff. But yeah, Keen, they did have, they did have an okay showing, but I did feel like they put themselves on the back foot just because of that draft. And you think we're sort of seeing why you know the panel was sort of a bit suspect. You were as well about that fifth pick razor yeah. having uh, an impact as the game went on. I mean, even in the earliest stages, there was maybe sort of other heroes that could have fit the spot better. So, as you said, looking at this was almost certainly a pick because the team may have felt that it was just a comfort hero for MS, and they might not have known what else to go for I in think that sort of situation. A that's, bit of pressure. What I was, that's how I felt, too. I, I saw their draft, and I'm like, I don't really know what else fits in here. So, they tried something. Didn't work this time around. LGD's looking really strong. Absolutely. Uh, another win in the bag there for LGD as they take down King Gaming. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, another one for LGD. They go 3-1 and one in the group. King Gaming with a lot of work to do after trying something a little bit different in their fourth game of the day. Let's find out what our panel members uh, made of that. Winter, we'll start with you. Another clean sweep for the panel. You all said LGD had the stronger lineup. They've proved it again. Yeah, but it was uh, quite a scary early game because you know, they struggled to get farm on the TB. Like the, the last pick raiser meant that their win condition for, for King Gaming was to put a lot of pressure in the lanes. And because it, it was a safe lane raiser, so they dedicated both their supports to help out the underlord, resulting in a really, really farmed underlord in the early game. But yeah. it wasn't enough. I think the key move was they lost the, the first Roshan. LGD, they, they didn't do well in the lanes, but they made this very, very smart smoke play because they understand that the enemy is going to want to pressure more and try to extend their lead. They stole the Roshan with the Venge, what, Venge Beast. I think three men or four men smoke, they got the Roshan. Without the Aegis, the enemy team had to wait it out and the, the pace of the game slowed down so the Terra Blade could have uh, caught back up. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah, the early the early aggression from uh, Keen Gaming really paid off. They swapped the lanes, left the uh, Razor in one versus one scenario against the Beastmaster. They pressured the Terrorblade with exactly what they need needed to do. But uh, as you mentioned, that Roche sneak uh, played a big part. Also, I gotta give credit to Venge. Venge died once this game, and she was using those swap pretty offensively, yep. like like this situation. She swaps uh, a DP so they can blow her up. Um, most of the time he was aiming for either DP or Underlord because Underlord was so tanky. They just swap him in and have enough damage with uh, Beastmaster summons with uh, all that uh, damage from Vengeance Aura as well. This is a really choke point. Weird, weird team fight from LGD. Like three man Firestorm plus a pit. And there were worrying moments, Winter, in this game for LGD. Yeah, they, they, they were, but uh, overall. Um, overall, I think the whole game plan and their movements, their itemizations were great too. Like SM went for like a heavy physical build because they had a Bench and Beastmaster aura. Uh, yeah, I think it was a little shaky at times, but I would say overall they they did their job. Yeah, you can you can you can lose to the death ball. I mean, uh, if, if the KG starts off the lanes pretty well, you can obviously see a couple times on their rotations or kills, mm -hmm. LGD are able to get something in return. I'm starting with the Shadow Fiend mid. It has to be clean if you're going to play this way because your lineup is not going to be able to scale. So late game is pretty much definitely going to And no, no catch. LGD. They didn't have catch. Yeah. So you got to take those Roches, like you said, and then you have to be able to get to high ground and finish objectives in the time. They did manage to crack high ground at some point, but it uh, wasn't enough. And ultimately, LGD is just going to outscale them. But, um, I mean, you can see kind of the game plan, right? Keen, they have some issues of, uh, with coordination and teamwork and who to play around in terms of identity. And so the simplest way to deal with that is to just draft strong lanes and try to snowball advantages from there into a win. Mm. And uh, LGD proved why they're the better team mm. this, this game. Yeah, it's tough for the cost, isn't it? See, him, see how they can get out of the group now. Yeah, I mean, I expected it. I don't know how how you guys felt about Keen Gaming, but uh, no surprise. I'm actually surprised that they took a game from OG. Scoreboard, uh, LGD, top of the scoreboard, as you would expect after that victory. Wasn't all their own way, though, although there was a 10-3-12 in the middle of that uh, for the man named Somnus. Now, I just I still can't get used to saying that, Jack. Just say maybe, don't I know, right? <laughs> I, like, why does he have to be different? Why does he have to have use a different... Well, nobody calls him that anyway, do they? I, I don't think I don't think any, uh, any <laughs> Chinese... 
people like first and has <laughs> called him anything but maybe either for a long uh, time. Yeah, sorry, buddy. You can change your name where you like, but you can never not be maybe. Uh, Chalice also six four and sixteen FY doing a great job two five and seventeen and two two twenty two for Mr X and over <laughs> nice little uh, set of stats for him. Uh, who was the MVP for you, Lacoste? I would say X Nova. His swaps are really on point. I mean, when you play Venge, you want to swap your uh, allies, but uh, he was mostly using it uh, for offensive purposes mm. because if they blow up Underlord, they don't have anything to fight with. Yeah. That's <laughs> FY. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not X Nova, but that's okay. He can share the MVP maybe um, or with maybe or with Nova or I don't know. I'm so confused now with all these different names. But uh, Nova was the MVP for the second time as well today. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff uh, from, you know, from from someone that like came went to China all the way from sea, played with people that he didn't know, and come this far. You see how I set that up for you, so you could you know talk about your sea brother, <laughs> dominating <laughs> China Dota now. Thank you, Paul. I I got another story for you. So you know, <laughs> v VGJ Storm at the time we were looking for uh, for players. There's a bit of a reshuffle. Is it is this uh, the Ace one where you were gonna buy Ace, but he went to Secret instead, or is this a different one? No, no this oh, right, the, okay. the, that was at the start of the season. Right, you, you gotta okay. be more specific because you changed the roster like five <laughs> times already. <laughs> sure, sure. So around around New Year's, and then um, you know, we we reached out a little bit. We gotta you know throw the nets really wide, and you know, kind of asked around about SCA. You know, who are some of the promising players and captains from this region? Ex Nova is a name that came up. You know, very, very resoundingly, and you know, we talked to him a little bit, but uh, ultimately, I think at the time he was already going to go for that tryout with LGD with a couple of other players, and then ultimately, you know, that did work out. So here he is, and you, you can see why. Just a very solid support player, has a lot of ideas uh, as a captain and leader as well, which is always rare and always so valuable in any team. So glad he's doing well out here. It is indeed. Thank you very much, gents. Uh, right, time to move on. Uh, we've still got three more games to go today, although they have really sped part. Like, blink and you miss some of these games. They're so quick. I uh, wonder whether the next one will be the same thing. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, though, game number six will be upon us. I'm a child of the smoke and flame born again in the dead of night just a child of the blood and pain getting bit by the desperate cries. I got a doctor's inside. 